preparing uh, in the alliance. And uh, we have to remember that fair burden sharing was something we addressed at our summit in 2014. Tricks Ingado, KT News, Nairobi. All right, uh, thank you, Trix, uh, for that. And now, this week, uh, President Donald Trump of the U.S. made his first foreign trip, a trip that has been subject of discussion on all avenues, international media, local media, the Internet as well. Ashley Missouri now comes into studio to just take a look at the nitty-gritty moments of uh, the first foreign trip made by Donald J. Trump, accompanied by his wife, Melania Trump. Ashley, good morning. So you were right, it has been a topic of discussion Definitely. around the world. And of course, those nine days have been quite a number of days for Trump. He's done so much. Of course, let's start with our first board. Uh, President Donald Trump is visiting five countries in nine days. Uh, now, uh, Saudi Arabia... Uh, is the first country and Trump signed nearly $110 billion a weapon deal with Saudi Arabia. Now we have to know that Saudi's Vision 2030 business plan is to become the heart of the Arab and Islamic worlds, which aims to diversify its economy away from oil as well as lessen its dependence on other countries for military capabilities. Now Saudi Arabia is one of the leading buyers of U.S. weapons and uh, it only buys 2% of production and repairs happen in the United Kingdom. Now, historically, U.S. defense packages have come with long-term sustainment contracts for repairs, upgrades, and modernization, which theoretically produce American jobs, but don't actually do so, largely because of uh, the automation of those uh, production processes. So those jobs uh, that aren't going back to traditional manufacturing laborers, but at best, a smaller number of young, high-skilled employees from the technological sector. So we know that uh, U.S., produce the, the weapons for them, but then the production and the repairs uh, is done by the United Kingdom. The next uh, city, uh, country that uh, Trump visited is Middle East, where he pursued the ultimate deal between Israelis and Palestinians. Now, Arab states to recognize Israel in return for a Palestinian state. Its capital in East Jerusalem in line with the pre-1967 war borders. Now, we have to know that so far, only Egypt and Jordan have signed peace treaties with Israel without any linkages to the Palestinian question. Now, this plan is actually 15 years old, old and it was uh, developed by the, unveiled by the then Saudi Crown Prince Abdullah at a summit in Beirut in March 2002. Its launch was soon overshadowed by a Palestinian suicide bombing that killed 29 elderly Israel celebrating the Passover holiday. Of course, the next country uh, in uh, the next country is Italy, and where he visited the Vatican at first. Now, in the Vatican, he met Pope Francis, and of course, they talked about healthcare, education, assistance for immigrants, and um, promotion of peace in the world through political negotiations and interreligious dialogue. In Rome, uh, he opened the United States border to more m immigrants. This is what they talked about. Now, in the same uh, city, or in, in Rome, rather, there was so much ongoing talks about how Melania Trump, the wife of President Donald J. Trump, wore a veil in the Vatican, but no headscarf in Saudi Arabia. Of course, people are saying that this was rather disrespectful to the Saudi Arabia. Of course, there is the picture there seeing uh, Melania Trump in a headscarf, uh, without a headscarf in Saudi Arabia and in, with a veil in the Vatican. Now, the next country was Brussels, where there has been some tensions between Europe and the U.S. since President Trump took office with a letter telling European countries that they should follow the United Kingdom's example and turn their back on the European institution. So, of course, there were going to be this affected negotiations on the EU-U.S. trade deal, the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, that's what they call it. And then later, he went to the North Atlantic Treaty Organization chips, where he talked about uh, the summit, of course, focused on military Spending and fighting terrorism. Uh, Washington uh, wants NATO to be even more involved in counterterrorism and the struggle against called Islamic State. Now, let's not forget this. An organization, uh, he once told the same organization that 
it's called obsolete. So he described the organization as obsolete. Of course, after that, he went to Italy, where there was going to be at the G G7 summit that has just concluded the future of uh, military alliances, the fight against climate change, and even free trade all hung in the balance. And of course, the summit was to discuss foreign policy, global threats, and economy and review economic coordination. Now, let's not forget that Kenya was among the four African states invited to the summit, uh, the others being Ethiopia, Tunisia, and Nigeria. So, Akisa, that's what Trump has been up to this week. All right, Ashley, thank you very much. Uh, the G7 summit has just begun. Yeah, oh, but just thank begun. you very Sorry. much for that. We'll be getting addresses from uh, the African presidents tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So we will be definitely taking a look at that. But thank you for coming in.